So my name is Maya Boucher. Um, I'm a professional cricketer for England and I've been playing cricket since I was about six years old. Um, I am currently away in New Zealand on an England tour and I have played for England for about three years now, but I've been professional for about four years since the women's game has become domestic. So, um, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being part of 45 Strong. And let's start with the first question, which is what does being strong mean to you? Um, I think for me, it's about being independent and um, really understanding what I believe in, I think, is, is a really important thing for me. Um, and just sticking to that and not really changing for other people. Because um, as a person who has been influenced before by other people, I think that's something that I've learned is really important. Um, and, you know, standing up for myself is, is a big one. And, you know, you can only gain confidence by doing that. So, yeah, especially in, obviously in my sport is is really important to do that. I'm constantly learning that I need to still improve that because there are still moments I get it right, but others that I'm like, it's still a weakness. As you said, it's not something that we're taught. Um, but yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. And can you share an experience where you had to be strong and, and how did you handle that? It more happened when I was a bit younger, but um, more recent, more recently in kind of my life at school, um, cricket for girls wasn't really a thing. <laughs> um, and I got a lot, I got bullied and I was sledged, which is what we call as cricketers when we're on the pitch. And they basically talk talk at you, give you chat. That's what we say. And I think, yeah, I think mainly throughout school, I just bullied a lot for being a, a girl in cricket. And I think that was the, a big learning for me just to to keep going. And, you know, it kind of made me a bit you know hard is what you you know everyone goes through school and has either one way or the other but um for me it was just sticking to the fact that I loved cricket and I loved enjoying playing it and yeah I just guess I wanted to prove them wrong and look where I am so <laughs> that was my yeah that was my proving proving people wrong yeah and I'm so glad you did because of you know obviously when you were playing cricket as a child you didn't have a professional career route but now you're at the top of the game or one of the one of the top of the games so you you're able to really sort of demonstrate why you fought for what you did back then even though it wasn't visible to the others yeah definitely and because you know obviously at the time I didn't really know if I wanted to play cricket but I, I really enjoyed it and I think that was the big thing for me the fact that I still enjoyed it throughout the time there and then going on to play and getting up getting to this point where I you know I get paid for what I do is is really really cool um and I can just say that I am a professional cricketer now which 10 years ago would have been absolutely nowhere didn't exist. <laughs> so, yeah very happy you literally carved the way so didn't exist <laughs> no <laughs> and well yeah. it leads great on um, greatly onto the next question which is how do you think societal expectations about women affect the concept of strength yeah, so I think strength is a is very is a very interesting topic in terms of you know we we see what we see perceive as strength for women now is how they deal with their hardships and how they deal with what's going on in their lives and um, it's very individual um, and I think in terms of what you know we see now is we as cricketers as a cricketer especially. Um, that as athletes we have to be physically seen to be physically strong and really big and you know muscly and this kind of masculine masculinity about us but actually there's a lot more to that um, you know I, a lot of my teammates are quite small but very strong just physically genetically strong people and they can you know they're coming down the wicket and hitting massive sixes 80 meters you know into the ground so it's it's incredible to see that and I think yeah just in terms of the you know individual strength for me it's it's quite hard to to describe as a I mean the expect expectation where we are is that you know women can't really show strength in in the way they speak or like they can't really speak freely about how they feel about strength and um I guess yeah just more learning about how we can show it in different you know so different societal um industries so like business and you know sport is one just a really big industry but 
you know, we can go into you know business and um lots of other you know topics that I guess are just really important. So yeah, no, I think it's 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 important to see that we, you know, as a as a female cricketer in a pretty male world, I would say still. Um we have a lot of um things that we can we have to deal with. So yeah, I guess the expectation is there to to be the best of the best all the time. Yeah, what I'm also hearing in what you're sharing is um, we might have to show a different way of leadership because if we keep playing the old dogmatic rules of what you know good leadership looks like, which is that strong, stoic, confident, typically male energy uh, words that we use, we're not going to be able to evolve into anything different. So, you know, you standing where you are and your teammates to say strength is in short, is in petite, is in smiling it's in community yeah. it's in all of these different levels we actually need to re almost rewrite the rules is what i'm hearing uh which yeah definitely yeah and it, it comes into it the, the kind of you know i know females stereotypically are seen as more emotional and you know sensible but you know caring and nurturing but in the teams that i'm in you know, you see that, but you also see the strength in that, in the the community of those females who are actually really caring about each other, and the strength comes from that, which is really exciting. And I love that that part of our environment is so special because we we care for each other, but we're all really strong for each other, and we we want to be, you know, saying to other teams out there, you can still be. You can still have that care for each other there and you don't have to be really, com you know, you're going to have to be competitive anyway because that's your sport. But showing that strength outside of it, you know, as a as a team is really important. Yeah, I guess, it, you know, if it, as an individual in a team sport, it's, it's very difficult to kind of see the balance, get the balance right. But, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's really interesting and exciting. I guess it's exciting. And I, I know we're sort of, sort of blurring the lines with these questions, but what are some common right. misconceptions about us? Oh, me, it's fine. There's no. I just <laughs> use the. I I like the same questions just because it gives me framework to to be able to sort of make sure I don't. Yeah, deal. Cool. I'm a, I'm very tangential, so I'm very easily distracted. Yeah. So it's more for me to keep my head and my brain in one line. Um, but what are <laughs> some common misconceptions about strength that you've got you've encountered? Um, so I'd say a couple of things, um, probably, well, it's all really to do with cricket. Um, I haven't really had much outside of that. So, um, I guess the, the main one for me is we have actually a, a bat. So when we play cricket, there's a, there's a limit on the, the meters of the boundary. And a lot of the time they think, okay, well, you're going to hit it 60 meters, let's say, and the men are going to hit it 80 meters. But there's that kind of, I guess the, the misconception is that actually the, the women are hitting it into the crowd. So that is the, where they're, hit, they're hitting it the same amount as the men. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, okay, well, you can hit sixes, but actually previously, you know, I've had people say, oh, but women's cricket's so boring and you know nothing really happens but it's literally the same you're just not putting the effort in to watch that it's it's the same as men's cricket it might be a bit more you know men's cricket has been around for a lo much longer period of time but the way that the women's game is growing and improving and the money and everything in, inside of it is you know that's i think people just misjudge that that's that's how it is so um yeah, I guess that that's a big part of it. The you know because there's so much media around it now, we want to make sure that people are watching and seeing that this is happening, and you know we can prove to them that we can hit sixes, we can hit the ball really far, we can you know make it fast paced the way that everyone wants it to be. Um, and I guess yeah, that's that's probably the big one um, that people don't realise. And it's the same as women's football. You know, everyone suddenly everyone's just watching because oh wait no they've actually you know the lionesses did really well and and that's why 
I guess, yeah. It's a lot of, actually quite a lot of my female friends don't really know much about cricket and all my male friends know a lot about cricket. So having a bit more education around that as well, I guess that's, people don't realise that actually the me- male, male people will know more about cricket than females will. So that's that's another thing um, that I think, well, but that's changing now because of how the how the game is going, so. Yeah, I think it's also important to remember, you know, obviously there's 45 strong campaigns around women, but men can be strong allies. And potentially, yeah, hopefully, the men listening to this interview with you, they can think, how can I champion cricket to a, more, to a wider audience and even support women in my life to get involved in cricket? So you know, there's a great way for us to work together in getting getting more women in sport or more visibility and, and supporting women who are already in those leadership roles. And men need to and have to and want to play that role as well. They should they should want to because you know a lot a lot of it came from my a father figure for me. So like my my dad was the person who pushed me and you know helped me and supported me to be a cricketer. And, you know, that's that's something just that I've grown up with, but it could have been very different for other people. So, you know, the fact that the men are actually wanting, well, they say, I say certain people, certain male, you know, figures are, are wanting to push that. And, you know, we hope that we can, that, that they can actually continue that for the next generation as well, so that, you know, they're pushing their fellow, you know, fellow friends and, to do the same thing so I guess it's just hoping that that can continues. Amazing and how does how has your understanding of strength influenced your approach to success and goal setting? I guess yeah so this is um I guess this started mainly for me when I um I got dropped from the England Academy um I didn't really understand that I wanted to be a cricketer still at that time um but I think just understanding that, you know, I really, I really had to work, I had to work really, really hard. Um, and, you know, putting that all the time and effort that I've put in over the last six, seven years um, is just, I think it's just kind of uh, the word pinhole. I don't know if that's the right word, but just, um, you know, it's given me a bit more of a purpose and like knowing that, I just wanted to play cricket and it didn't matter whether I was going to get paid or not. I just kind of went for it. And, you know, I, I went away and spent money all on my cricket and, you know, really like tried to do as much as I could um, to, to get to that point where I had the opportunity to then play. And, you know, this success, the success that I've got from just that is crazy to think that I've, come from where I was and you know traveling god knows how many hours of the day every day to training and to matches without any sort of financial backing you know I had well, I had my parents but you know I had to go and say right this is what I want to do and you know that's that's come from of course all the support that I've had um and then you know that success has just come with the years of that hard work and really putting in the effort all the fitness and you know that the people don't really think about before and you know they don't think about that that comes is a massive part of how people get success how you know you you set a goal and and you just have to work as, as hard as you can to get to that point and I guess yeah that's that's really working out for me now <laughs> so um no I'm just happy that I've been able to you know, show that a bit I guess the strength is is there has always been there but it's just been about kind of feeding it over the, the last 10 years or so eight ten years of you know gritting down and and getting down to business really <laughs> well it sounds like your strength was blind faith originally like you know you just had to do it but however way you could because obviously there was no money within that sport to support you and now yeah. you're slightly more strategic right. because you can budget you can earn a salary you can actually support yourself and rest rather than going to a full-time job on the side so yeah yeah exactly and I I, I never thought I would just be doing cricket as my full-time job and the fact that I can do that now knowing that I you know puff and 
but it was tough throughout those years of training um I guess yeah that's it has really influenced my approach because now I just know as much as I do the work that I do outside of cricket all the fitness and you know anything the nutrition all of that um that comes with it and being happy in my life and knowing knowing that I'm going to do whatever I can to play for England every game that's just those goals have been there since I've you know I've had that financial backing which is you know I guess it's a it is a spur on for, for you so um but then yeah just playing for my country I guess is just the best thing you can ask for so I actually asked <laughs> to play for um Britain in triathlon because I am um... I qualified oh, really? and I was age group national champion in Australia and they said no. So I've only competed oh. in Australia. So <laughs> oh. was it did it feel yeah, different for Britain? Or... It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And um you 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 know, I I absolutely admire that your blind faith for playing cricket was but there before the money was, before there was any means of a job or a salary. Oh, yeah. So what, from your own experience, what's a tip or technique you can share for developing and nurturing that, that strength you had in particular, say like, you know, seven years ago when, when, when you weren't able to look at it as a career as well? A lot of it came from, I guess, well, for me, it was a, the influence of my coaches and what they, they gave to me was things I could learn that were just to keep me going and I think that one the one thing I would say is you know really listen listen to the people who want to help you and not be afraid of you know different there might be different opinions about what you're doing but don't be afraid to kind of stand up for yourself and say well no this is what I want to do and but make sure you take that into account so I guess it's yeah it's about filtering out you know what you don't really want you what you don't believe in but what you want to learn for me and yeah I guess just that sum up just to stick to your morals really I guess yeah no that's the that's a big thing yeah because I've had a lot of outside influence and a lot of people talking to me about different things and I've just had to go okay no this is what I want to do and this is what I think is going to be best for me and then just stick to that and then if I need if I've needed help along the way then I would ask and I would ask the question. We, we're not alone. There's a wealth of knowledge and support out there. And uh, exactly. being, being strong is actually leaning on those and allowing people to work yeah. within our blind spots as well. There are things in you that yeah. you don't see, strengths and weaknesses, that um, exactly. they can through. Mm. I think you learn, and when you learn about your weaknesses, you become stronger. You actually know, you become a stronger person by knowing your weaknesses and failing forward. As I like, as I like to say, I like that. So. I'm going to use that. <laughs> I fail <laughs> forward. <Okay. laughs> and moment, I got that from a coach. Did you know, you that's, that? that's something I've learned. Yeah, I mean, it's something I learned, and you know, I've I've actually taken on, which has been really helpful. No, that's true. At the moment, I feel like I'm falling forwards all the time. Like I'm running so fast, I don't. I think I'm going to fall, but um, I'm going to call it failing forward. <laughs> So better. Going forward. So, so the final question is actually the first question again. Um, uh, so, what, what does being strong mean to you? <laughs> I mean, as I said, um, I guess just being being independent and those sticking to my morals um, always. Yeah, I guess just knowing that I knowing my voice is important, and yeah. not to be afraid to to speak out and speak my my speak my opinions. What's my opinion? Thank you ever so much for making the time. You know, I know you've got a match tomorrow when you're in New Zealand. Uh, it's really meant a lot for me for you to be part of the 45 Strong. And I'll be cheering you on from a little bit from Britain. You. Match. <laughs> from across the world, 12,000 miles away. <laughs>